this love of cars begins way before the barn or any full-time business. Our love for cars starts back at our earliest memories. Welcome back this week. This is season four, episode two. I'm Renzo Rosato. And I'm Gaston Rosato. And this week, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We wanna dive into how this all got started for us and really share our passion with you guys. The fact is it was zero space, zero dollars. Nothing was handed to us. We did it from the ground up and we're still in that process right. of making it happen. That's right, all passion and all family. So let's dive into the subject. You know, there's a walk-in in here every single day. I have to pinch myself because I can't believe we have all these cars under our roof. The fact is it wasn't always like that. A lot of people don't know. I bought my first car when I was only nine years old. I love that story. That's I right. That story. I had a neighbor with a for sale sign on an 81 Toyota Corolla Coupe five-speed. And I went and I knocked on his door. He was asking for $200. I offered $100 and he literally laughed at me. He said, all right, kid, you know what? I'll sell you the car, but come back with your dad. And sure enough, I did. And my dad lent me those $100. And through his resources, because he had a dealership also at the time, we put it for sale and we sold it for a whopping $250. Not bad, 150% profit. profit. So back in the early 90s, late 80s, when my dad was dealing with cars, he had one of these, but it was just a regular car. It's so funny now that I finally have one and I've always kept it in the back of my mind, I own a GTV6. You know, in this case, it's business, but I wanted to find the right one. And, you know, today we consider it a classic. It's funny to see how things evolve. So this car in particular to me is special. It wasn't this exact car, but it was a 355 Spider. I remember a red tan interior. It was the first car that you had when you had this location, when you first opened That's up right. this location. And I remember true. taking a picture of the car well, you sent me the picture of the car sitting right here in the middle. The space is not that big. No, it's not. And I remember putting the 355 here and thinking to myself, How am I going to fill it up? How am I going <laughs> to fill this place up? Did I just take a bigger bite of what I can chew? Because it was a scary moment. Starting a business is a very scary moment. But that's then. one of the key things about starting a business is making sure you're always pushing yourself to get to that next level, right, which right. I think you've always done a great job of that. Take me through the steps of how you really took off with this idea. Yeah, let's break it up. So. I was working full time as an insurance adjuster for one of the major insurance companies. Basically after work, I'd start to work, searching for cars online, looking for good deals. Granted, there's only one car at a time, it might not have much capital to be able to do that kind of stuff. Which was your first car that kind of set you off? The to car go? that sparked everything. I remember, I'll never forget, my wife was out in um, at a work convention and I was just at home watching TV and I was watching Chasing Classic Cars with Wayne Carini and I said, man, this is what I love, you know? And I'm working full time for this insurance company. I know deep inside I'm not happy. And I, I literally just turned off the TV, I opened up the computer, I opened up Craigslist, and I started looking for local cars. And I found a 1949 Chevy pickup, a 3100. I called the guy up, I made the appointment. That same day, everything happened that same day. I went to go see it and I just bought the car. I said, I know I can flip this thing, I'll make some money on it. Sure enough, I put it on eBay, I think I made like, $1,500, $2,000 on the truck. And that sparked it. And we're talking about 2012. In 2013, I finally incorporated the bar in Miami as an official company. It started off at the garage of my house, one car garage, it expanded to the backyard, <laughs> it expanded to, to the old man's house, it expanded to my neighbor's carport, and I started to need the space. That's when this place finally showed up. You know, it wasn't only specialty cars, whatever I could find to get right. my hands on that made, that I thought had some value to make money. Toyota Corolla comes to mind, a Honda Civic comes to mind, a Jeep Wrangler. It didn't matter if it was 300 bucks, 400 bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever it can. And I just didn't touch that money. I just kept reinvesting, right. reinvesting into what I knew I wanted to be my business. And so ultimately this took a lot of self-discipline and extra work that wasn't really paying you like a, a regular salary job. No, not at all, not at all. And, and, and it's that's not to easy have to the, do. You know, it's not easy to do and it's important to have the support of a family member or a spouse, in this case my wife, very supportive, to be able to allow me to say, hey, I know this is your dream, go for it, you know what I mean? Right. Now, it's important to know I was actually due just a week away from a 20% raise at work. Wow, and my that's, wife, that's my a, wife a big me, raise. Either you quit now or you'll never quit. 
and I was able to quit not having this location. I didn't have the big overhead. I was able to team up with another local company that financed high-end cars. They gave me an office space and allowed me to do my side hustle while I helped sell their cars. Right. So it was a nice little transition from corporate America to an agreement with another company. And that is what allowed me then to launch maybe a year and a half later to what ended up becoming The Barn Miami. It's incredible. It felt like a very short period of time. I'm sure for you, it didn't. <laughs> it was so hard and, and, and you know, people see our, they follow us on Instagram, they see the YouTube channel, they see us driving these cool cars and all these flashy pictures, but you know, they don't see the bills we pay, the, the, the salaries, the taxes, the insurance, the permits, <laughs> the licensing. I mean, right. the list goes on and on. There's so much pressure behind owning a business right. and it's not all, it's not all fancy, that's for sure. So I would say the key to this business that you've built that's been successful has been discipline, has been putting your time, extra time that you have into it. Um, another thing I think that's helped us out tremendously over these years is the connections we've made with people. Network is absolutely everything. You can't do anything by yourself, right. okay? There's always, all these stories that I'm telling you, this timeline that I'm breaking down for you, involve somebody else, a hand here, a hand there, hey, you know, partnerships, relationships, and growing that network, like you said, is one that's ultimately gonna give you what you need. But you gotta put in the time. You're, right. not, you're only gonna get out what you put in. You gotta be willing to grind, grind every single day. I work seven days a week. It doesn't stop, there's emails, there's phone calls, there's events. I've been doing that for years, guys. For years I've been working seven days a week and I'm still going at it. I'm not where I wanna be and I probably never will be, that's the fact. Yeah. And taking the risk, being will, being willing to take the risk of, of doing this. Because no one's gonna come save you. Exactly. Okay. You're in there by yourself and no one's gonna come save and, you. And that's one of the reasons why I love being here. One, because it's a passion for cars. It's, it's always been there growing up with that and then growing up with you. Us being about eight years apart, is I was driven towards having that passion as well. And I mean, being able to help family is probably one of the best things in the world. So. I'm thankful for, for that and, and I can't wait to see where this takes us and I hope that you guys continue to follow our journey throughout yeah. this whole process. Absolutely, and I'm excited to announce that we're finally expanding next door. We'll be doubling our yes. physical size now. So we'll be documenting that as time goes on and we'll, we'll, we'll do a whole episode on the expansion of the business. The car is finally here, so let's go check it out. Sweet, let's do it. guys this wraps up this week's video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope it gave you a little more insight on what we do day in and day out and what we did to kind of get here right and there's a lot of details in between that unfortunately we can't put them all into one video right. but hopefully these new series will we can go into more discussion talk about that but if you have any specific question guys please feel free put a comment down below we'll be more than happy to answer for you That's don't right. forget grind hard every day accomplish your dreams you can do it for sure now let's do what we do best. We got some new inventory. Let's make sure everything's working properly. We got it. work to do. We so. got some work to do. We'll catch you guys next week. I'm Renzo Rosato. And I'm Gaston Rosato, guys. Take care next week. Peace out. <laughs>